I remember a few years ago, I had been doing the house of prayer. I'm from Kansas City. We do the 24 hours, seven days a week, international house of prayer in Kansas City. And I've been doing it for a long time. I would say, but then you might do the math and figure out how old I am. <laughs> I always say, I've been doing it since I was five. <laughs> Not really. I've been doing it since the beginning. And, um, you know, I, the way the Lord led me, because I'm a very passionate person, I told the Lord, you know, I'm not gonna, I'll give you a certain amount of years. I said, I'm not gonna date. I'm not gonna build my own ministry. I'm not gonna build my bank account. I just really wanna know you. I wanna settle the issues. I wanna settle my unbelief. I wanna know you. I'm gonna fast as much as you give me grace. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna be in the prayer room. This was just, I'm not putting that on anybody. This was just the way he led me. I'm very passionate. So whatever I do, I have to do 100%. If I fall in love, I fall in love 100%. If I go after God, I go after God 100%. Like, it, there's just no, it's hard for me to do more than one thing. <laughs> I just, I go. So I, I had been living this life for some time. You know, I'd given most of my money away. Again, I'm not putting that on, peop on people. There's nothing wrong with having money or being married or building a home. This is just the way he led me. So I'd given most of my money away. You know, I'm still, not, I'm, I wasn't married. I, I turned down people that I could have married and so I don't have children. I live in a one bedroom apartment. You know, I live a very simple life, which to me is a, a very free life, very transcendent life. To me, it's liberating. But a couple years ago, I sat in the prayer room and I was like, did I, I don't know. I was just kind of like, did I do it right? Like, was that really necessary? <laughs> I mean, you don't have anything against homes and and family. In fact, you love family. Like, why don't I have a family? I, I, I was just having this conversation. Like, did I do this right? Did I really, was it really necessary to give you everything? I mean, come on. And I was kind of had this complaint and I thought I was, I thought I was saying, I thought I'd be further along in you. I thought I would be anointed. You know, my ministry's not that anointed. The, I'm like, really? Like, this is it? Me sitting in a room telling you what you tell me to tell you? You already know anyway that this is my, this is, this is it. Like, this is the, why? Why are we doing this for years? Like now it's been decades. I'm, like, I'm still here. I'm still sitting in this little room in Kansas City, Missouri, telling you what you tell me to tell you. Like, are you serious? <laughs> and, I, you know, I wasn't feeling his presence that strong. And, and, and my worship leading wasn't that strong. It was just kind of like, did I really have to give up everything? And I sat down. I, was, I, would, I didn't think I was bitter or complaining. I was just pondering, you know how you do in your head. And I instantly just flopped my Bible open. You know how sometimes your Bible will just fall open. And I looked down and instantly my eyes fell on Malachi 3, verse 13. And he said, your words have been harsh against me. And I stopped. And I said, what? How am I the harsh one? You took everything. <laughs> and and I, I go, I said to him, I know I told you I'd give you everything, but I don't know what I thought. I thought we would work out a deal. or I don't know what I thought, but you actually just took it. You took it. <laughs> That's it. In the story, you took it. <laughs> you took everything. <laughs> like, why? How am I the harsh one? How, what am I getting the short end of the deal here? You know, I had this kind of complaint, like, excuse, you're, the, I, I, I felt like, like appalled, like, how am I being harsh against you? And then it goes on and he says, I, and I looked down, I stopped there and had that argument and then I immediately looked down and the next sentence says, you say in your heart, how are we harsh against you? <laughs> and I went, ah! <laughs> I was like, I am in a conversation with the Bible right now. <laughs> and I was like, he's in my head, he's in my head. Like, <laughs> this thing is real. He says, you ha say in your heart, how, how am I harsh against you? How have I spoken against you? And I began to weep when I realized I was being rebuked by God. And he says, you say in your heart, it is useless to serve God. You say in your heart, what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances, that we walk as mourners. And this is the children of Israel complaining about the laws and all that they have to do. And you're looking at the proud and you're looking at the wicked and you're saying, you raise them up. Look how blessed they are. They're proud and they're wicked and you're still giving them the blessing. And you say, it's better. It's better to just be wicked and eat, drink and be merry and then die. 
and I, was, I started to bawl as I realized this somewhere along the journey, this accusation began to rise up in my heart and saying, I don't really think it's worth it. I don't know if I want to do the next 40, 50 years of my life radical. When I see a man or a woman in their 60s, in their 70s, who are still going radical, wholehearted, still asking the question, how far can I go? How abandoned can I be? That moves my heart a thousand times more than a thousand 20-year-olds. And I love the 20 year olds. But when you do it at 30, when you do it at 40, when you do it at 50, when you do it at 60, yay, 70, and you're still saying, how far can I go? How abandoned can I be? When you have the pressures of life and your own children are growing up and you're still looking at him and saying, I wanna go further, I wanna go deeper. There is nothing more beautiful in the human race, in my opinion, than that. It is stunning. The older I get, I'm shocked that people don't just quit. 